What's up everybody? Welcome to Zelda's Domain, a home for everything Zelda. And today we'll be laying the first brick in the foundation of my channel, Ocarina of Time Podcast. I've played this game since release, although it was not my first Zelda game I played since uh, since release. Well, I played Link to the Past when it was still new, still relevant, and the N64 had not come out. Uh, I got very familiar with the Zelda formula over uh, the course of 96, 97, 98. By the time this game came out in 1998, I was definitely ready to get into a 3D world and understand the formula. So I got my controller in hand right now. I'm just gonna boot up the game, hang out, play the game, and talk about some Ocarina of Time. First of all, I wanna say thanks for watching, and I really hope you enjoy the content. So let's just get into it. This game had very huge polarities. It played out like a movie. You start off in this safe world, open world a little bit, right? You get to realize everyone here is a kid, no one grew up. It's your hometown, you're the outcast. It feels very safe at first, even when you get to uh, outside, outside here. The world feels very good. And then eventually as an adult, you get into the dark world. And the storyline that follows it is very, uh, is somewhat intense, very in depth. And as I've grown up over the years, it's held lots of different meaning. Uh, lots of different meaning, including uh, relatability, right? So you s after leaving your hometown as a bit, bit of an outcast yourself, you head off on a grand adventure, you know, you, you get responsibilities that you necessarily didn't ask for. You meet new people, old friendships that you met along the way kind of fizzle off, and there's new big cities, new big worlds to explore, and there really is no looking back, as is the march of time. So this is definitely my favorite Zelda game. Like I said, it's the game I played the most out of any video game ever of all time. I really just enjoy the, the colors, the, the script, and the fact that it seems like you never find everything. I mean, I mean I've 100% of the game dozens and dozens of times. Loads, I can do it all by memory, but there's still new things to find. For example, the dying guard behind uh, behind the marketplace. I didn't know that existed until 2012 or 13 or something. There's just, there's so many new things that you can find. And back in the day, we even thought we could beat the running man. We tried and we tried and we tried. I remember putting way too many hours into that, you know, every so often you get bored. And when you hang out in the game, you hang out in the game because it had a very inviting feeling to it, right? So there's all these little quests, all these little corners to check, but it's not overwhelming, especially nowadays. It feels a little dialed back in compared to most modern AAA games like The Witcher 3 or Skyrim or any of the Elder Scrolls games. It definitely feels dialed back in that sense. And I very, very much enjoy it. It feels manageable. It feels like a game that I can really uh, spend some time into and I notice a difference. You know, I can get through a lot of the story or get a lot of the side quests done or find a lot of the hidden collectibles or upgrades and I always feel accomplished. I don't feel like I ever lose out on anything, which is really important for anyone getting into the game nowadays. You don't want something overwhelming. I remember putting, you know, 30 hours into Skyrim, 30 hours into The Witcher, and everyone says, you're still at the beginning of the game, man. You still got ways to go. <laughs> so, this being my favorite game, I always found, found that to be a bit overwhelming, you know, over the years. So this game originally came out in the winter of 1998, and it's been re-released on so many Nintendo platforms. It's very popular even for emulation. The uh, randomizer is incredibly popular online. This game definitely has, has, has lived. It's got a ton of fans, and I'm very, very happy to see that, right? Mainly because when you grow up, 
the things that you enjoy don't necessarily are still relevant or other people don't see what's special about them or the magic kind of dies off, right? And even on the Nintendo Switch Online version, the extra crisp and clarity of playing it on a, a flat screen, a modern day flat screen, and it's rendered properly, it might be a bit blurry, right? But it's still, it's still the game that I fell in love with. And I really like, even the, the textures on the shields and the items, everything looks fantastic. So back to the story for a bit. So I think that Nintendo was looking at the movie Titanic at the time when they came up with the storyline because this game plays like a blockbuster movie. They've, um, they've admitted or they've said that Leonardo DiCaprio uh, from Titanic was supposed to be their model at the time because he was uh, their, their idol, their western culture influence in Titanic being the biggest uh, selling movie blockbuster at the time. It makes, it makes sense, right? This movie very much follows the blockbuster movie formula, uh, starting from the, s the soft world and getting into the dark, dark world. And just all the story that goes with it, I like it better than any movie, to be honest. Uh, a casual playthrough for me still lasts about 30 hours before I get bored, and that is a lot of time to play any video game, and any time I've ever picked it up, I pretty much play it for that amount of time. So why is this game, why does it have an effect, why do people keep making videos on it, why do people keep talking about it, and why is it still relevant in all the consoles through the Wii and the Wii U, uh, 3DS remakes, all this, why is it still relevant? Well if you've ever been a fan of Breath of the Wild or any game that kind of just opened up the doors for you, you know, uh, Minecraft is especially popular for that reason. It was a game that just opened up an engine of possibility. I, I like to compare it closer to Breath of the Wild. So Breath of the Wild was one of the few games that made me feel the way this game did. The, you didn't know it was possible. You didn't know what, what was, you know, there's so much mystery to explore. There was so much not on the charts. E even, to this, even to this day, right? Uh, this game and Breath of the Wild is a, they're mysteries, enigmas of a game, even though we can get into the coding and see what's going on, we still don't know everything. Just when you think you do, you find out new things. And I... Oh, oh shit, here we go, sorry. <laughs> once again, I'm playing at the same time, so just trying to stay focused on both. But once again, it is comparable to Breath of the Wild in, in that fact. And I'm very excited for Breath of the Wild 2 because Majora's Mask was a great follow-up and I feel like Nintendo's following that timeline again. So this was one of the first games that just had pure atmosphere, especially for, for its time and even, even today. You play some N64 games, if you're going through the retro games you're not gonna, you're not gonna come across games that have such good look, uh, such good quality and uh, that hold up through the modern day graphics. So throughout my channel I will be making videos on, I'll be, I'll be, doing, re, I'll be doing reviews, I want to do this podcast just to, I'm going to do one big talk of a game before I get into all the videos and this is just a good, uh, good I think a good habit to follow right, a good in introduction if you will. So I really appreciate everyone watching. If, uh, if you're not familiar with my other gaming channel that I started about a year ago now, it's GG Speedruns and Gaming. I currently have about 260 subscribers on that. I do a lot of speedruns and I do some reviews and retrospectives. So if you want to check that out, if you're into anything other than Zelda content, feel free. Uh, lo love for you to uh, let me know what you think. Also, going forward, this being my first upload, I've would really want to emphasize feedback. I really want customer feedback. I'm going to be starting a Discord here uh, very soon. If it's not in the link, should be in the description right now. <laughs> the link, get it? Anyway, 
let me know what you think. I'm I'm only making this channel, making this video because I feel like I have so much information out there that's not fully covered in the YouTube platform, and my I feel like my voice can definitely fit into what's out there. So once again, I really appreciate anyone anyone watching here. It's I'm very excited just to talk about Zelda. Right? YouTube is a fantastic platform these days. And um, the classic games are coming back. There's there's a ton of Zelda games, and I think Zelda will always be relevant no matter what, no matter where you go, um, in any country. Throughout throughout the decades, it's always going to be around, right? Like classic rock, <laughs> it's just always going to be there, man. It's always going to be there. Now, I want to talk about how this game has inspired me. When I was young, I it got me into reading, right? This game's very text heavy, and it, you can't skip a lot of it. You can't get through any of that stuff. So I feel like it very much introduced me to uh, just a lot more mature writing, and it got my mind thinking a lot. So I like these fantasy worlds as a kid. Who doesn't, right? They're a lot of fun. A lot of fun to check out. But this this came out before Harry Potter. This came out before the Lord of the Rings craze. This I feel like just kind of was part of a a franchise uh, following that was just growing in our timeline. You know, uh, the Pokemon franchise was just getting going around this time too. So everyone was really into video games. People of all ages, everyone was playing Pokemon. Even I'm confident if this game or Pokemon came out at this stage in my life. I'd be playing it so much. Once again, it all just comes down to the feel, and there might be larger games, there might be smaller games that do certain things better, but once again, this, this game was definitely handcrafted and from the bottom up, and there's definitely a lot that anyone can learn about uh, story, right? So back to, back to the inspiration there. Um, I started writing a lot. I started writing a lot of novels. I did always did very well in English class, I feel like, because I just wrote for fun all the time. It was fun to make your own stories or even adaptations of these stories. You know, your interpretations are always different from other people's. And I always think no one plays this game or no one interprets this game in the same way because there's so much go going on. So as I be begin to write, I ended up uh, ended up playing music and started writing songs, and I still write to this day. I do a lot of creative writing, and I do a lot of uh, music writing still, so... I feel like, you know, making little video essays here and there, or just talking about Ocarina of Time for 20 minutes at a time, is definitely something that I'm capable of. Oh, we're going in here? Let's go. Let's go fight him. Let's do it. So I think we're just going to have a quick little Ganondorf battle to close out this video. This has been, it's been a good, uh, good couple run-throughs. I know it's a little choppy, but a lot of podcasts are anyway. And I recently learned what uh, podcast means or stands for, looking up the terms as personal on-demand broadcast. I found that quite interesting. So really, if, as long as you're deep diving and talking into a pod about a certain topic, that's really what matters, and I think it's a, it's a form of entertainment that uh, is really, really is one of a kind, and that's the reason that it didn't get on the TV when we were younger. Uh, debate shows were always a thing, but it was always full of commercials, and it was never, you know, a couple hours long, right? So, anyway, I'm going to be doing a few more on these, going to make a lot more shorter tutorial videos coming up. Alright, I'm going to sit here and battle Gandor, but I think I'm going to end the movie there. Uh, we'll see you in the next video or upload. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.